Welcome back to Optimal Anesthesia today, we're hitting the road again to explore two major routes in anesthesia, regional and local anesthesia. Think of your body as a vast city with countless roads, highways, and intersections. Regional and local anesthesia are like setting up roadblocks or speed limits on certain routes to control traffic and ensure safety during surgery. But just like roadwork can affect the entire city, anesthesia can have widespread effects if not handled carefully. So, let's take a drive through this topic together. Regional anesthesia, such as thoracic epidural or spinal anesthesia, works by blocking the sympathetic nervous system, which usually acts like the traffic control center. When we block these nerves, it's like turning off the traffic lights in certain areas, leading to relaxation of the blood vessels, or vasodilation, in those regions. Imagine the road suddenly widening, allowing cars to move more freely, but with fewer cars on the road overall. This leads to a decrease in systemic vascular resistance, basically, less resistance for the blood to flow through your arteries. The result? A drop in blood pressure, or hypotension. But here's the key point, the level and intensity of this blockage play a huge role in how much of an impact we see. For instance, if we place a block higher up, such as in the thoracic region, we can also affect the nerves that control the heart. This can reduce the heart's output, essentially slowing down the entire traffic system. In some cases, this might even lead to bradycardia, where the heart slows down too much. Now, let's think about how this affects blood flow, or traffic, through the rest of the city. When we block off major roads in specific areas, blood gets rerouted to other parts of the body. This redistribution of blood flow happens due to vasodilation in the areas where we've blocked sympathetic nerves. However, this also means that less blood is returning to the heart, preload, leading to a decrease in overall traffic volume, cardiac output. For our elderly patients, or those with pre-existing cardiovascular conditions, this can be particularly significant. Their bodies may not be as effective at rerouting blood flow, so the usual compensatory mechanisms are blunted, and they can experience more pronounced drops in blood pressure and cardiac output. So, how does all of this tie into oxygen delivery? Think of oxygen as the vital supplies that every part of your city needs to function. When we reduce the traffic flow, cardiac output, by blocking certain highways, it can impair how effectively these supplies are delivered to the various parts of your city. Take a thoracic epidural block, for example. By reducing the amount of blood, or traffic, flowing through the main roads, venous return, and decreasing the power of each heartbeat, stroke volume, the overall supply chain can be compromised. If we don't manage this carefully, the reduction in oxygen delivery, or flux, can lead to inadequate perfusion of the tissues, especially in patients who have limited cardiovascular reserve to begin with. But it doesn't stop there. Imagine a situation where the city suddenly experiences a surge in demand, perhaps due to a major event like surgery, which we can think of as surgical stress. During these times, the demand for oxygen skyrockets, but the reduced traffic flow, cardiac output, can create a mismatch between supply and demand. This mismatch can lead to a lack of oxygen in critical areas, such as the heart muscle, myocardium, and skeletal muscles, potentially causing ischemia. Now, here's the science part, but don't worry, we'll make it simple. Local anesthetics work by blocking voltage-gated sodium channels in nerve cells. This prevents the transmission of pain signals, hence, you feel no pain. However, if these anesthetics get absorbed into your bloodstream, they can travel to places where we don't want them to go, like your heart. In your heart, these local anesthetics can block sodium channels in cardiac cells as well. Think of sodium channels as the electrical wiring that keeps your heart beating in rhythm. When local anesthetics block these channels, it can disrupt the heart's electrical system, leading to conduction disturbances. 
This can manifest as arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats, or, in severe cases, even cardiac arrest. One drug to be particularly careful with is bupivacaine. It's an effective local anesthetic, but it has a strong affinity for those sodium channels in the heart, making it more likely to cause cardiotoxicity. So, while bupivacaine does a great job numbing your nerves, it needs to be handled with care. Hypotension and reduced cardiac output create a chain reaction that impacts overall cardiovascular stability if too much local anesthetic gets into the bloodstream. It can also lower your blood pressure, causing hypotension, and reduce the heart's output. Essentially, the heart struggles to pump as efficiently, which can result in decreased cardiac output. This happens because local anesthetics, in large doses or if accidentally injected into a blood vessel, can impair the heart's ability to contract properly. Oxygen delivery and hemodynamic stability reflect the bigger picture of maintaining overall patient well-being. Now, let's zoom out a bit. When the heart isn't pumping effectively due to the systemic absorption of local anesthetics, oxygen delivery to the tissues can be compromised. The heart is responsible for ensuring that all the cells in your body get the oxygen they need. If its function is impaired, oxygen supply can be reduced, leading to potential problems, especially in tissues that are highly dependent on oxygen, like the brain and muscles. So, while local anesthesia generally has a smaller impact on overall oxygen delivery compared to regional or general anesthesia, it's still something to keep in mind, especially if the patient has pre-existing cardiovascular conditions. Clinical Implications – How do we minimize risks? So, how do we ensure local anesthesia stays as safe as possible? First, careful dosing is crucial. The amount of anesthetic we inject matters. And when we inject it, we need to be precise to avoid accidental intravascular injection. Techniques like aspirating before injection help ensure we're not in a blood vessel. We also commonly add epinephrine to local anesthetics. Why? Because epinephrine causes vasoconstriction, it tightens up the blood vessels, reducing the spread of the anesthetic into the bloodstream. It's like putting up barriers on roads, making sure the anesthetic stays local and doesn't go roaming around the body, potentially affecting the heart. And of course, monitoring is key. If a patient starts experiencing symptoms like ringing in the ears, dizziness, or more severe signs like arrhythmias, these could be signs of local anesthetic toxicity. Quick intervention is vital in these situations to prevent more serious complications. That's all for today on Optimal Anesthesia. Remember, whether we're working with local, regional, or general anesthesia, every decision we make in the OR can have a significant impact on patient outcomes. For more insights like these, head over to OptimalAnesthesia.com. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, stay safe, stay informed, and keep improving the art and science of anesthesia. See you next time.